time it will take to get permitting and the cost of permitting. That's very important to a lot of folks. And so I don't want this to become an encumbrance to the forestry folks and others. And uh, we need some buy-in and assurances from Clemson that we're going to do this as expeditiously and as economy-wise as cheap as we can for these permits. We'll talk about it a little later, but sure, sure. I'd like for you to speak on that for a moment, if you would. Yes, sir. I'll be glad to address that, and I, I'm glad you brought up the federal funding. That's what's supporting the effort. Um, so there there will not be um, any new fees or, or requests for permitting fees for anything that we do. The only existing permits that we have where there's a fee involved is for a phytosanitary certificate and that involves a federal shipment of plant material outside the state of uh, South Carolina. Uh, so there will be no fees for, for the routine type work that we do moving material within the state. As far as timing goes, um, we're going to uh, hire more people. We've already hired four individuals to work full time on this project and we'll be hiring more. So we have the, the dedicated resources that we need to respond quickly. Uh, another thing that we're going to do is uh, Mr. Cam Crawford's invited us to speak at his next uh, committee hearing um, that he has uh, with his group, and we're going to talk about how we can work together to make sure that the industry knows the process for requesting a shipment to go out of that quarantine zone, make sure they know what the timing is that needs to be in front of them. Uh, we will need some lead time, maybe a week to 10 days. But if we're notified before they start trying to move material, we can plan for it, and we should be able to turn it around within two to three days from okay. notification. I'm going to circle back one more time because I just thought of this. But I noticed in some of the uh, stuff that you put out that we were able to read about, there's some 4,500 trees already been identified, and uh, out of that, a 1,000 or so have been removed. So did we wood chip up all this 1,000? Is that what we did to them? Yes, sir. 1,000 trees. Yes, sir. And, and USDA is partnering with us on the removal part. Uh, they're, they're taking the lead on that. We, we're really happy. <laughs> we're letting them do that. But a lot of the homeowners uh, that we've contacted, oddly enough, uh, they've started noticing the trees are declining and yeah. starting to die. So they're really happy that we're coming in and having the ability to remove those trees, and it's not costing them anything. And normally, uh, Before you know, the wind or the ice comes in and removes them, right? Right, exactly. So it's been a very positive experience for us. So. Right, I'm going to open it up to other questions. Any, any further questions? Okay. <laughs> Representative McGarry. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here, too. Um, I do have a question. Upon um, After the wood chipping, um, what happens to the, say, at the eggs of the beetles? Well, the, the eggs can't survive uh, without a, a host tree. Um, so what the eggs do is when, when the beetle lays the eggs, the eggs are on the, the cast of the tree, on the, the outside part of the tree. And when they pupate and become a larva, they, they drill inside the tree, and that's how they survive. That's their food source. So without that food source, the eggs will die. Thank you. Good question, though. Thank you. Any further questions? All right. Well, thank you, and uh, hang around just a minute. Yes, you sir. might you might be needed to come back up after uh, Mr. Crawford. If you'd come on up, then we'll see where we go from there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Thank you, sir. I got to take my mask off and put on my glasses. <laughs> uh, that's what happens when you get old. Um, I'm Cam Crawford, and I have the honor of being the president of the Forestry Association of South Carolina, and we represent the $21 billion wood and paper products industry, and that includes the wood supply chain, and that's why I'm here. Um, first of all, I want to say we have a real good working relationship with Clemson University and in the State uh, Crop Pest Commission, very professional group, but we still have concerns with this document. Um, you will hear this from almost every industry, um, and particularly ours. But anytime a state agency proposes to regulate an industry, you know they always have a good a good reason. Usually, or most of the time, they have a good reason. This is definitely a good reason to do it. But the problem is, is the implementation of it usually. And what I find when I deal with people in Columbia, we got everything. Everything sounds good, and everything works well. And then when we get out in the field, it's not working the way that we want it to. And this is what we ask, um, is that these regulations need to be predictable, cost-effective, and streamlined. And I think you will hear that from almost any industry, any time. 
Um, those are the, I've been up here for over 25 years, most time representing business. That is the bottom line when it comes to regulations with any business or industry. They want to know, they want predictability, they want cost effectiveness and streamline. I've um, had the pleasure of talking to Clemson um, several times on this, very similar conversation that Dr. Cole had with you. Um, we feel comfortable enough to not oppose this, but we do ask that you join with us and ask Clemson to just do that with the permitting requirements, make sure they're cost effective and they're streamlined and they're predictable for our industry. Um, and I will say if it was a statewide quarantine like the federal government would implement if Clemson was not in charge, we would have a whole different position on this. But we have very, we're very confident with Clemson that they will try to work with us on this. And they have agreed to speak to my board of directors on April 6th regarding this matter. And we'll talk about the regulatory framework. So all of that on the record, uh, we are not going to oppose this, but we are concerned um, about that. And you'll probably see me back at some times um, in the future with some other state agency <laughs> saying the same thing. Um, and I am so glad getting to a bigger picture that the um, leadership of the House has formed this committee. Because I'm telling you, it's getting to the point that regulations are worse on the industry than any legislation that's ever passed. And so I'll, I'll stop there. All right. I, I would ask only one thing of you. After your April 6th meeting, uh, would you... Uh, and I know you will, but would you please keep us informed if your position changes or you have trepidation different than you do today? I appreciate you coming and, and being the voice for this large industry in the state. And uh, I don't have any further questions. Do either of you have any questions? All right. Well, keep us informed as it goes along. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. All right. I'm, I'll entertain a motion. Yes, sir, Representative Bros. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd move for passage. All right, got a motion, got a second. All right, we'll call the roll. Mr. Burns. Aye. Ms. McGarry. Aye. Mr. Rose. Aye. All right, we'll pass that one on to full committee. Mr. Chairman, the real Mr. Chairman back there, we'll slide that up to you and we'll go forward at the uh, next meeting when it's scheduled.